Good morning. Today, the third Sunday of Lent, the readings are Luke 13, 1 to 9, and 1 Corinthians 10, 1 to 13. Pontius Pilate was an unpleasant and unpopular governor of Judea. We know this not just because of what the New Testament says, but because of other historic documentation. The fact that he is also mentioned in the creeds is not because he needs to be remembered for who he was, but rather to set the good news of Jesus Christ in historic context. The Galileans that Jesus refers to in Luke 13 had been killed by the order of Pilate, and that was only one of the things he did regularly, it seems, to upset and irritate the Jewish community. He did this in the name of keeping order, even though they had just been pilgrims who had been sacrificing in the temple. So what is the point that Jesus is making with his reference to those pilgrims, as well as the building accident in which 18 people died? Maybe we need to know where we are in the story. Jesus is on his way to Jerusalem, even though it is dangerous territory and he won't be safe there. He knows he has to go anyway to fulfil the Father's plan of salvation. Yes, he knows that Pilate and Herod are dangerous. They could easily operate in the way they are used to if they think it necessary. But, he says, unless you repent, you will all perish just as they, the pilgrims and the builders, did. I suppose that I would change my travel plans if I found that my envisaged trip to a certain place now carried the risk of being killed there because of who I am. And that, I think, is a clue to what Jesus is saying. Change your direction. That's not about literally turning the car because you haven't read the map or ignored Satnav, but it's about the turning around in the way our lives are going. I get fed up with my Satnav sometimes because it doesn't take the last two characters of the postcode. But then if I don't take the trouble to update the system, who is really to blame? In any case, Jesus is talking about our attitudes, our commitments and whether we take God seriously enough to change bad habits and give him the space in our lives that he rightfully owns. That is what Jesus is talking about and with so many of the things he said and did, he wasn't always heard. Therefore, the parable of the fig tree. Now we could interpret it in two ways. One meaning is that the story talks about Jesus as the vineyard owner. He has come to the Lord's garden and is looking for fruit, the fruit of repentance, of turning around throughout his ministry. Apart from a few, he has found none. There has been no repentance, no changing of ways back to God, not even in the places where he has been healing and feeding the people. In that sense, in the parables mentioning of digging around the fig tree and putting manure on it, the people are given miracles as well as time and opportunity enough to recognise Jesus and God's will. The second interpretation is that God himself has come to his garden, Israel, for many years, looking for fruit. Maybe Jesus is the gardener then, the servant who is now trying to dig around and put manure on it, as God's patience is wearing thin. In both interpretations, there is a limit to the time that people have for turning around. Sentence will be passed at some point. That is why Jesus says, unless you repent. We know how the story ends. And we also know that God is full of mercy and grace in his love for us. 
how though are we bearing fruit for God's kingdom? Amen.